Wave Act, the web-free software company that understands what you want. Hi everyone, welcome at Wave Act. Today with Lucas Vera, who is the founder and director of the only official Pope agency, so-called Pope Studio. He's also the web free lead at Polymix and he's the CEO of Universal Voucher. And as you already might guess, we will talk today about Popes, the so-called proof of attendance protocol. So first of all, thanks Lucas for being here. It's really a pleasure talking with you. And I would really love to know a little bit more about you. How does your day look like, for example? What are you currently working on? And yeah, what are you passionate about? Uh, thank you for having me here, guys. I appreciate the time that you are giving me to, to tell the story and what, what is going on inside of the POAP ecosystem. Um, so let's dive in. Um, so uh, uh, as you said, uh, I'm one of the co-founders of uh, the only official uh, POAP agency that is called POAP Studio. Uh, I'm co-founder with two of my best friends, people that I met 25 years ago uh, in my high school, French high school. Um, right now, I am ar we are three Argentinians. We'll talk about later that Poop also is very Argentinian per se, uh, but we live in, in Paris because we went to a French high school, basically. <laughs> and, um, and so, Approximately a, a bit more than a year ago, let's say 14 to 15 months, uh, I was uh, approached by POAP, POAP, the protocol CEO, who is also my friend Patricio, uh, because we were, I mean, we were in the crypto world uh, since many years before, and at some moment it was uh, uh, necessary for the protocol and for the brand and for the ecosystem to have some official representation in Europe because, uh, well, as you know, great stuff is happening in Europe on an on unprecedented level, culturally, scientifically, uh, legally, uh, regarding Web3. So, and also Paris uh, is one of the biggest pop market um, because of very nice conference like uh, uh, Ethereum Community Conference that is a, a, a must uh, in the Ethereum community in the year. So. Basically, what happens is that uh, 15 months ago, we decided that it would be good for POAP ecosystem to have an official representation here in Paris. And so we funded this agency that uh, its everyday work is to talk with brands, talk with companies, talk with uh, decision makers. Uh, on our objective is more on the legacy brands, right? The, the uh, brands that our aunts and, and grandmas could know uh, and, um, and engage with those uh, decision makers in order to make them understand why POAP is so cool, uh, why they should uh, use POAP as the first steps into Web3 and also, of course, then the having a, a better suited uh, POAP strategy or even they come to us and uh, they tell us we heard something about POAP and it seems to be cool and you guys seem to be humans at <laughs> <laughs> behind of it and we, you have some experience talking to brands and you're doing great stuff so let's talk and then uh, then it's our I would say regular um, sales uh, process where we try to fit what we can do to what the brand won't do on the timing and budget associated and uh, yeah and we help them uh, think about it but also execute a nice pop drop or pop strategy and we have had the chance to onboard many uh, brands that our aunts and grandmas uh, would, uh, would possibly know like the vogue of the world Kenzo's Porsche the Renault which is a car company the mm, I don't know, many more brands, WNBA, um, uh, Red Bull, um, and other stuff that we cannot say, but uh, Charlotte Tilbury with uh, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of, yeah, a lot of brands, and also working with all other agencies, of course, the, the publicists of the world, media monks, and stuff like that, um, because they, of course, they're forward-thinking, and they all 
already talking Web3 with their actual clients, and so we come in like the legitimization and also expertise because it's true we are experts in POAP and POAP is good and cool and everyone wants to do it so it makes sense for for us to participate in with them in the conversation or in the back end you know, in order to make sure that everything's gonna be uh, legal well done made sense that also respectful of the POAP mission we can talk about that later but I mean POAP is not only the free NFT that is cool but it has a mission of of preserving the memories right on the blockchain and, and what is a what is a memory what is a, 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 a an, an historical moment not everything can be it right maybe this interview is but uh, clicking on a button on a web page is not so something could be a pop some other things should not and then instructing educating people on web 3 but also on pop's mission uh, is our job uh, but our difference with the protocol is that we are revenue oriented, meaning that we can collaborate with communities and of course, if they do great stuff, we'll try to support them on a best effort basis. But our priority is talking with brands and make them understand that our B2B professional white glove services um, have a cost and you know, having that, that sales process. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. Uh, thanks for that. And since that you talked a lot about, let's say, brands that your, I, I love the statement, uh, brands that your grandma knows. <laughs> um, how would you, let's put it that way, explain Pope uh, to your grandma, for example? Great. Um, well, Pope is like uh, this digital collectible of a momento, right? It's like the tickets that uh, you own might have uh, collected from the concerts where that you were going or, or theater, you know, theater sessions that you go now uh, and that you might keep the, the ticket on a form of memory and you can keep it on your wallet, an like actual <laughs> real life wallet or maybe in a pin board on, on, on the kitchen. Well, Pop is that, but it, re it lives uh, on the blockchain, meaning that it's, uh, it's, on a, it's on a stored on a place that is uh, well, it doesn't belong to any company, so if you believe in the promise of a blockchain, like the Bitcoin, the Ethereum is going to be there forever, digitally, and, and it's yours for you to keep it or to engage with other, um, well, with the issuers or, or, the, or, the, or the digital aspect that will recognize the fact that you have gone to 1, 2, 10, 15 uh, concerts, tickets, uh, theater, uh, fashion show, sports events, birthday, uh, Twitter spaces, uh, and, and on and on. And uh, even we don't, nobody can predict what it be. Like no one could really predict in 1990 what the internet would be. Uh, but we are confident that it's a very good um, baseline for what uh, Web3 identity should be. And because again, it's those moments, the collection of those moments starts accumulating as a, some form of uh, an ID, right? And that's what's so for powerful. But at, the, at, at first, it's just those digital mementos that you collect, you keep, and you save word on your uh, Ethereum account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so someone who is now a little bit, uh, let's say, not extremely uh, within uh, Web3, but already has somewhat heard about, let's say, NF NFTs and Popes maybe as well. Um, how would you tell or explain them, let's say, somewhat of the difference, you know, because everything that has a separate name at least looks from the outside like it has to be something unique or different from, uh, for example, in that case, NFTs. Um, so how do you explain that they are dif different momentos or okay, can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, basically there are NFTs and there are popes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe okay. the difference? So a pop is an NFT. Uh, on, on the more technical aspect, it's an ERC721. So the, the first uh, standardization of the NFT. So it's, uh, it works like any other 
um, NFT, uh, technically it is. Uh, and if you can read the smart contract and produce regular NFTs. Now, it's true that uh, there are some differences uh, that are very important. First of all, in, uh, the collectors uh, in general do not pay for a pop. It's not something that you acquire through buying with Ethereum. It's only that so you acquire it by just being at an event and engaging with the minting process, which is rather simple. You should scan a QR code or receive a, a, a link, click on it, uh, declare your public Ethereum address, and then you just receive the follow-up. So uh, it's not something that you buy with your money. It's uh, maybe something that you get with your uh, cognitive presence. So that's for, su for sure is a difference. And, um, and then the other difference is that, of course, a POAP event is a, share, it's a share, shared community event, meaning that uh, there's very few one-on-one -on -one or unique pieces of POAP, and that's not even the original purpose, right? There's some artists that use it like that, and the protocol kind of allows it, like the bending of the mission, but the, the real mission is a shared experience that is shared through a POAP collection, and meaning that let's say we are in a concert right now, so every, every and we are 10 people, and I can show you then on my phone the collection, but basically we share this experience through the same collection. Then each POAP is distinct on the ID, meaning that we all have the same artwork, description, title of this event, but you will have uh, 6,382,000 and I will have 600, 3 million, 83. Uh, but both of us will have for that, for that concert, for that ticket, will have the same artwork and the same title and description. So I would say that um, it is technically it is an NFT, but the, the conceptualization of a shared momento through a POAP collection makes it different. And then, of course, the fact that you, don't, you should not pay for it, even if some we started to see people selling those as digital collect, uh, collectibles and for the protocol is not is not mm, bad with that i mean it, it can work um but the idea again is a share momento that we all conserve together and with the same artworks you and me except you would have like uh, you know a, a certain id and another id you can think of it like also when you go to an exposition like when you go to a museum and yet you buy the book uh, of the exposition and there is a limited edition, so everyone gets the same book, right, of the exposition. Uh, it says it's the same title, the same cover, the same the same words in the book. But you would have uh, number 18, and I will have number 42. And it's the same, but it's distinct, that it represents a shared momento, but each one has one, and each one has value. So yeah, the, the book of the exposition, or the, or the, or the sign poster, uh, in French, I don't know how do you say it in English, but in French we say serigraphie, which is again, it's the same mm -hmm. poster, the mm -hmm. same image, but you got a limited edition and there is, uh, I don't know, four, let's say 40, and you have number one and I have number five, and that's it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, one, one thing that comes into my mind when I think about all that, and I'm pretty sure that especially some, let's say, more conservative, uh, nothing bad here, uh, but... Uh, business people in general might hear that now and might think, well, why should I care? What Great is question. in it for me? You know? Great question. So there is two main answers that uh, we can give now. Three. One is, um, I don't know, if you're talking about POAP in particular or the web, entire Web3 ecosystem, let, let's assume that that person is already uh, interested in Web3, right? And so what's in for you? Basically doing POAP is the simplest, most effective, most prone to success uh, way to start, right? Because what is the alternative? Uh, is going to nifty kids and not understanding anything or calling developers and paying a lot of money with maybe n without understanding anything. And then you have the UX for your collectors because one thing is to imagine stuff and then it's ha actually making it happen. So if you're also, if you don't know that much, most probably your community don't know that much either. So it's, it's, it's 
a gigantic mess of not knowing what, how it works. So if you take a bit of a couple of hours of your time and get to read a bit about Poab, you will see it's very simple. So basically, it's the simplest, most pragmatic way to start into Web3 with a high ch uh, chance of success. That doesn't mean that it's super easy. That doesn't mean that it only takes 10 minutes of your time and then it's a, it's a, it's a given. It will require a bit more of time. Or you can call Poab Studio and we'll teach you the stuff. But, um, but yeah, it, it's the, the most simple way to, to start. Um, so that's for a first steps situation, right? Building some muscles, understanding mm -hmm. how it works, what is minting, what is a wallet, how I communicate with my community about wallet. But uh, understanding the digital scarcity, understanding the, what you should say, so everyone has the same, but there's a distinct ID, and then understanding why should I give a follow up. Everything, uh, those questions are it's like doing NFTs on a super pragmatic and cheap way. Because again, anyone can go to pull up, go to the site, read a bit, understand how it works, and do it for free, right? Uh, yeah. The brands that pay us is because, well, they're professional services, they want professional services, but anyone can do it for free. Then, whenever then the next step is doing one, two, three, four pop-ups for this thing that moment, and most people like, engage with that because everyone collects a bit, right? The ticket collection, that everyone for. But at some moment you say, yeah, well, I can collect four or five. I won't collect any every ticket that I have, and that's and then in what's in for our community, what is for us, and what is super interesting is that when you see actually with your eyes that. Uh, members of your community, some of them have four, imagine they have a f men uh, who have done three or four drops, so when you see some of them having four, some of, most of them having one, some of them having two, you start to understanding there is more engaged people than the others, which is makes sense, right? But before that, how, how, how could you do it? I mean, of course you can do it with email, and of course you can do it with comments on LinkedIn or comments on Instagram, but the digital scarcity that the POA brings also can al allow you to build a richer story. Meaning that if you have dropped four POAs and you have only, I don't know, let's say 20 person with four of them, well now you can engage in a conversation saying uh, the, 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 the holders holding the four POAs have a special access to conversation with the brand or to a night, uh, night event or even an internal event or a discount or stuff like that because you know it's not like a, a coupon code, right? It's not like uh, New Year's uh, NYE, NYE uh, 2022 that uh, if you give it to someone, someone can share it with another one. And you know precisely who can access it. It's those people that have engaged with you and have the four follow-ups. Now, it's then, then it's, 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 it's a, uh, a tool for the brand, right? Uh, I don't know what a, a each brand can do with the digital certificate that that wallet holds four of the distinct moments that has been given uh, through POAPs and maybe it's four Twitter spaces and at the end of the day it wasn't that relevant but also that speaks about the strategy, right? If you, didn't f if you did four Twitter spaces and you can see people collecting those four POAPs and then it doesn't um, generate a, a, a rich conversation with the with what that mean, mean most probably that means that the four Twitter space weren't that relevant, and that, 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 that's good to know. Um, but so, what's in for me, there's a lot of um, cognitive process that the brand or the community has to, has, to be, has to be able to do, but it's true that you only are able to do it when you have dropped a couple of pop-ups, and you've seen people collecting it, you've seen people w willing to cognitively present and to collect and say when poor when poor <laughs> we, some sometimes we see uh, twitter spaces or oh. stuff like that or live in linkedin and and you know you know and there's some engagement but people are expecting the pop <laughs> and then <laughs> when the pop is dropped is <laughs> half yeah. of the audience is gone because again and that's why people i uh, issues put it at the end right but uh, i mean it, 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 it is still a tool, like emails, like internet is, uh, and it's super early, so we have uh, more, 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 more cases. But again, wha what is fairly natural that we've seen is using a combination of pop-ups like an early li uh, allow list, meaning that a drop that, um, you know, 
real NFT for real money with real, real value NFTs get dropped and then in, in order to avoid the gas wars and stuff like that or to engage with the conversation you said oh whomever has that pop and that pop is allow listed so that gives you a some form of entitlement of, of premium aspect of premium access you got that for for drops but you have also that for in real life events uh, whomever has that pop can collect a ticket token proof or unlock protocol or get protocol we have a lot of partnerships that whomever has that pop can redeem for free this ticket and only pop holders can enter this in real life events or some form of a or a, of, of a middle ground that is everyone can collect the even bright or a token proof but if you have the pop on your wallet you will get a, a special ticket that gave you I don't know, a glass of champagne again access to the VIP access a conversation with the brand ambassador, a conversation with the CEO, whatever. Um, that's one thing. Then we've seen also talking gated experiences, e-commerces, like uh, if you go to a fashion show, you collect the pop, then you are invited to visit the e-commerce experience and you can uh, buy this exclusive um, asset that only people having the pop can have, but also there is limited access on the people that have the POA, meaning that the special bag that fashion brand uh, is exposing in a fashion show, well, let's assume a hundred per person has the POA, and then you can go to a token again experience where only the first 10 that connect with the POA will be able to acquire that special edition that has been shown to, the, to them in the fashion show. Uh, what else we've seen as a as utility? Um, we've seen also well raffles and votes meaning that uh, mm -hmm. for conferences right whomever has this pop or this combination of pop can enter the raffle but the more pops you have selected the more chances you have so we've seen that on, on treasure hunts right so you can, you can participate with first with the first pop that you have from the treasure hunt but then you um the more pop you collect the more chances you have um, and also for voting, um, we've seen that uh, only people having a certain POAP or a combination of POAPs can vote on a, on a motion um, and on a question of the brand or the community might have. But uh, I, I will also be honest, there is a lot of, half of it is also about uh, getting your first steps in Web3, understanding what digital scarcity is, understanding what a blockchain is, um you know and asking those questions that the aunts and and grandmas and aunts and grandpas uh, could ask themselves but yeah it's true that if you want to uh, tip your toes uh, get your 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 feet wet in this world uh most probably co-op is the, the best way to start because it's free and it's uh, it's uh, something that everyone you know Digital collectibles is, is fun, right? Of course, you can say why. Why would I do that? So it's more people enjoy. And whenever you say it's a, it's the moment that you collect, and if the moment is you know worthy, everyone wants it, um, especially if it's free. So uh, there is a lot of also of education and first steps. Uh, for yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. I, I think that really clarified a lot of things for many people watching this. Um, you just said probes are free, right? And many people that actually are somewhat familiar with blockchain know that you always have to pay for transactions. Depending on the blockchain, it's more or less, but you always have to pay at least something. How or what is the reason why people don't need to pay when they claim or get their probe, for example? Great question. So probe means well, we're going to get a, a, sh a bit technical, but um, the, the most expensive blockchain right now is uh, mainnet Ethereum. Um, and so POAP also exists since many years now. Uh, I think we're celebrating fourth year and six million POAPs minted. So for I this idea to work, uh, the I mean, minting a POAP could not cost not even $2, not $100, like at some moment of get for crazy gas wars but even the concept should be as traffic so what happens before layer twos before polygon before everything the the technical team of uh, poab decided to take a i think a good decision that was uh, minting on a side chain ethereum 
that is called now Gnosis Chain, but before it was called XDAI. And so basically, it's a proof of stake sidechain of Ethereum, meaning that your wallet that you get from Meta, um, wallet address that you get from MetaMask mainnet Ethereum still works on a sidechain Ethereum, but basically it's cheaper to mint there. So you are not paying, the co op is paying the a bit of a cent, a bit less of a cent, a bit more of a cent for each co-op, but the uh, strategy, the, acqu the uh, client acquisition, I mean the user acquisition strategy was to abstract completely that uh, that gas fees and put it on, well, on, the, on the protocol side and you're not caring about it and of course that, that is what uh, made co-op a success, right? That's why last December, not, I mean not now, but I, I 12 months ago we were minting number 3 million and even with this bear market and a lot of projects going, you know, disappearing, today we're already on the six million. So there was a, 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 a an expansion of a hundred percent, and we don't even count those with emails because I've been personally be distributing uh, in events, in, in real life events where people do not have wallets, and Pop also can work with email. And I wouldn't be surprised there is thousands and thousands of. Uh, POAP collectors that up to now are only collecting with email, that is also a step before the Web3 wallet, etc. But uh, everything to say to you that um, someone is paying, of course, but in this case it's POAP that abstracts you the small amount of gas fees, but then of course you add, add up. And 3 million times 1 cent is still, <laughs> is still money, but the idea is that. Uh, um, the protocol should monetize another way, maybe with agencies like us or or some po some super special pops uh, getting you know some form of a dollar or two dollars. Um, it wouldn't be a mean fee; it would be some form of a, a making sure that um, only people that care about it uh, could uh, could have it. And that's, for example, something that happened with the merge. You remember a couple mm -hmm. already passed the merge, but a couple of months ago there was the merge of Ethereum mainnet. There was a very uh, official POAP from the, all of the Ethereum community, Vitalik was there, stuff like that. And for that POAP, uh, you had to demand, you had to send a transaction of ten dollars. And so, of course, in experimentation, and of course, everyone that wants that POAP, uh, no one had any issue with that. Uh, I think there was ten thousand of those POAPs minted, and or everything was donated to a, I don't know, I don't remember which uh, which projects, but. But conceptually, uh, it's free because POAP is paying for the gas fees. Small gas fees, but gas fees at least. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think that clarifies a lot. Thank, thank you for that, uh, Lucas. Um, so just out of curiosity, I have two questions now based on that. Um, are there, so from what I have heard now, there are no plans actually, and I'm sure you wouldn't tell me, but I want to ask anyway. Uh, so from what you know, there are no plans to actually ever charge users for gas fees, no matter how cheap they are. Okay. Uh, well, correct. But it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of the, what we just said. It's not about gas fees. No. It would be some form of uh, participation, donation. Um, I mean, one of the biggest problems that Pop has is farming. What we call farming, that is basically uh, a lot. There's a lot of groups of people that collect every Pop they can. They don't care about the event. They don't care about the issuer. They don't care about anything. They just want Pop, 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 Pop. And it's sometimes of an issue because some issuers uh, in Twitter Spaces or in real life. They don't understand that and they say, oh, I wanted to make it easy, I want to put a QR code and I want to give a link and everyone can get the POAP. But the problem is there's ac active POAP farmers that would take the whole liquidity, not even liquidity, the whole um, capacity of a POAP drop in 10 minutes, right? If the link is sufficiently public, if the brand is sufficiently public, and if the POAP drop is not done correctly, and that's why we're here also, uh, the whole capacity of the drop would be a... a out in 10 minutes and so in order to avoid that uh, it's all about right, right it's all about caring and seeing the value out of it so um, again the merge pop up uh, it was asked for uh, around ten dollars and everything was happy with them because uh, we knew that uh, 
if we didn't put some form of a barrier, um, the whole capacity would be gone again in a couple of minutes. So it's not about paying for the gas fees, it's about um, seeing the value and sharing the value of that digital collectible. Like you would buy for some amount of money the golden coin that uh, some museums and mm -hmm. church give. Um, and so, yes, but it's a, it's a conversation that is ongoing. If you go to the discords uh, and the community calls, you will see that there's a lot of yeah, discussions about how to do it or when to do it or what's, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. So it's an ongoing conversation, but Patricio says, uh, Patricio, the founder of Poop and CEO, always tells that uh, Poop for him, I mean, his goal for Poop is to be a public good, meaning that anyone should be able to mint and share a POAP for a historically relevant event. And, um, and of course, there is service to pay and people to be care to, to, to ensure that everything works, but it should be a public good. And again, I invite every one of our listeners today to, if they have uh, some strong feelings about it, to participate into POAP discords or community calls because it's a conversation that to be had on a community level giving your opinion and saying why you should think that for some use cases it makes sense, why for others use cases it makes no sense, and like everything, we'll find consensus on doing a marvelous pop drops, and in general what happens is that people that has never issued a pop up and has not been um, attacked by farmers uh, do not understand that, uh, you know, you need to put some form of friction because those farmers want every POA possible, most probably thinking that there's going to be uh, an airdrop of POAPs and the more POA the company and the more POAPs you have, the m I mean, there's no plan for any airdrop, uh, or also people assuming that, you know, there will Bitcoin was worth nothing m 10 years ago, no. or and now it's not worth nothing, so maybe, you know. But uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing conversation, and I have not the answer, I think no one has, um, but yeah, if you're feeling strong about it, go to the Discord of POAP and the community call and express yourself. There is also a forum. Um, it's called Discourse. Uh, the, I mean, maybe you can share the links later, but it's mm -hmm. a, a forum uh, where people discuss about the POAP ecosystem and methodologies and drops, and etc. So I do recommend people checking that. 100%. I will also put it into the video description so that everyone uh, has it easy to find it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, um, yeah that's... I can definitely imagine that that's a huge issue because just imagine or think about it. You want to issue popes on your event and suddenly there are no popes left, right? Everyone is standing there trying to scan the QR code and it's actually a huge flop. Or at least it, uh, let's put it, um, the mood would be down, right? Um, like, especially from the organizer's side, because it's usually something fancy or something cool that is uh, going to happen, right? It's something special. And then if it doesn't work, that's uh, definitely some disappointed there. Um, that's now a question that's coming purely from my side, um, out of curiosity. Are there any plans and why not to support other blockchains as well. We have Polygon, maybe Solana, I don't know whatsoever. Why and why not? Um, well, I, I'm not the voice of that, meaning that myself as the founder of the agency, uh, we don't have that much voice on the product, but uh, the market do speak and ask questions like, like that one. And it's not the official answer, it's the one that I heard. Um, it's uh, at some moment, Poop wants to be, you know, something that everyone recognizes, and it's Poop is, 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 by definition, is chain agnostic. It happens that it works very well, and it has been working very well on across the chain, and then there's of course the bridge with the mainnet. So functionally, it works very well ha as it is. Um, but again, your question is um, why? Why not other? And there's not a definite answer. It's all about you know volume and and complexity of the of the of the of the of the product. And at some moment, if you don't even if you don't 
don't, I mean, if you don't load Ipoa Pub, or if you check on your Coinbase uh, wallet, or if you check your Rainbow wallet, you can see it not natively. So, the ideal uh, answer that I should give you is it doesn't matter, right? If it's on Gnosis, Mainnet, Polygon, whatever, it's your moment, and you should be, I mean, Borov should work with good partnerships and, and understand the UX in order for you to be able to have them under your eyes or on your wallet uh, uh, without you caring about which blockchain it is, right? Then at the moment it works because if you connect your wallet with a website, a token get a website that um, checks if you have some pop-up, mm, most probably, I mean, it's, it's tied to your wallet being on the same EVM compatible wallet on Ethereum mainnet, just chain, polygon, arbitrum, optimism, whatever. And so, uh, it's Poap wants to make that abstraction, like the gas fees, uh, to the collectors. It's not easy, it's not that simple, because of course no one wants to pay gas fees, but some people want to see their Poaps on their polygon, right? Uh, so it's not as so such a simple reply, but, uh, but, um, but the, the official answer is Poap is chain agnostic, and whenever it makes sense, it will make sense to have them on another chain, the protocol uh, will do what is necessary, and of course, there is some of them that are more obvious, like Polygon, uh, than, I don't know, Solana, but uh, again, chain agnostic, and it will happen, but again, if you have strong opinions about it, please go to the Discord, please go to the Discord channel, voice your opinion, and try to make up the best thing you can be. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Lucas, for that. Um, do you maybe have, because we talked a l about a lot of different and interesting uh, viewpoints now and uh, things in general, do you have three things that you would say either to a brand, startup, or just a general user, uh, what they should remember from this awesome episode? Yes, of course. So, who, POAP, POAP is clearly the simplest way to start, and also is the funnest way, and it's also the, the strong case is about uh, becoming part of your digital identity, right? The digital identity that you own, but it's not for uh, any company to have, not even POAP. Uh, it's your assets, your tokens, your your wallet. That's one. The second one is that uh, if you have any opinion and you want to make it even more yours, uh, go to the discourse, go to the Discord and voice it between pricing the gas or the donation or, or, or the chain, everything is, is possible. And the third is that um, besides the utility of collecting moment, um, a lot of more uh, new experiences like token gated e-commerce, token gated access to a party, token gated uh, access to other Twitter spaces or spatials or whatever, or sandbox experience, that everything is is, uh, is, uh, is to gain traction. So yeah, be whenever you feel that there is a pop from a community that you care and that you can cognitively engage, to take that pop because you don't know what's the future utility of it. That's also the beauty of it, right? And once it's in the blockchain, anyone later on can create a new utility for that many months later. Exactly, love it. Hey, thanks for that, Lucas. Really, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time on a Saturday for everyone to do this podcast with me. And yeah, thank you everyone for watching as well. And yeah, if there's anything, uh, I can do for you, Lucas. Just let me know. I will put all links you want uh, into the description as well. And yeah. Talk right, soon. Thank you. Thanks as well. Bye. Bye. Wave Act, the web free software company that understands what you want.